welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Don Prezant. I'm co-founder of the Open Recognition Alliance. This is a regular badge clinic on February uh, the 26th, uh, 2020. We're honored to have with us today uh, Lena Patterson, who is a co-executive director interim of eCampus Ontario. She'll tell you a bit more about that. And she's basically talking about the open imperative uh, in uh, recognition. So, um, Lena, I'm going to just get out of your way and let you go at it. Thank you. Thanks, Don. So, can I share my screen now? Is that okay? So, let me just make sure I've got the right one here. Okay, how does that look? Uh, looks good. You can see that cover slide. Okay, um, and just the slide, not like my notes or anything. <laughs> no, don't worry, we can't see okay. <laughs> Perfect, okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Dawn, for the invitation. It's, um, it's always such a pleasure to join these kinds of communities because um, this is an international community and, and that brings with it um, all sorts of wonderful exposure to different ways of thinking about these questions of learning recognition. So I have 20 minutes with you um, and I want to leave a lot of time for discussion because I hope some of the things that I say will provoke thinking or ideas or further points that you want to make. Um, and uh, I'm going to start just by uh, making sure that everybody on the call understands um, what my context is. So I work for an organization called eCampus Ontario and eCampus Ontario is a consortium of all 45 colleges and universities in Ontario. So that is just about under a million students, I think Jess, um, and, and like I said, 45 unique institutions across two different sectors, um, colleges and universities here in Canada, which tend to have some differences in the way that they operate. So uh, we are a consortium of the whole system we are governed by our members. So we have a board of directors. Um, we're, a not, we're an incorporated nonprofit with a board of directors that is made up of representatives from the system. And uh, we have a, you know, an AGM every year and, um, and the, the members make up the governance. But we are also funded uh, entirely by the government of Ontario. And so um, they are a critical stakeholder in this conversation as it moves along for us. Um, so we kind of sit in between, we are not quite higher ed, we are not quite government, we are, we are somewhere in between um, and we were designed that way uh, in order to be an incubator and, and a catalyst of new ways of thinking um, and, and practice in higher education. So it was a very intentional design. So we have a strategic plan that lays out um, three areas of focus. The first is that we lead through open and collaborative practice. Um, so that looks like system level support for online teaching and learning, communities of practice, open and reusable uh, materials, professional development resources, technology training. Um, we build capacity through shared and collaborative services. So that's researching and evaluating new technologies. Um, our sandbox, um, educational technology sandbox lives there. Um, and the main, the main purpose of this piece is, is also to reduce costs among our post-secondary partners when it comes to educational technology. And then the third is our innovative arm. Um, and that's where we provide leadership for learning technology and research development through funding prototyping, testing, all those kinds of things. So a lot of the work that we do um, is agile, iterative, and takes that kind of prototype approach. And you'll see that in some of the examples that I share. We first started exploring questions of alternative recognition of learning in November of 2017 when we hosted our first open badging forum in Toronto in partnership with Dawn. And Dawn has held and continues to hold these convening events around open badging in Canada and all over the world. And it is a great way to get started in the conversation. Our first event, we had 88 people. Um, they came from K-12 to higher ed government, industry, community, and it was our first opportunity to bring divergent and sometimes um, diverse perspectives together on what this future of learning recognition might look like, what we were currently doing, and where the gaps and opportunities might be. 
We hosted uh, our second forum in March of 2019, this time with over 100 attendees, so kind of kept growing. And between these events, we started seeding experimentation with open badges through small grants to our institutions as part of an educational technology sandbox process. And we captured the results of eight pilot projects in that open badging sandbox. Um, all of those results we put into an open resource available in Pressbooks online. And I've included a link to that at the end of my presentation if anyone is curious about about those pilots. Um, one of our kind of principal ways of operating here is that we, we give really small amounts of funding to our institutions and we get them to experiment and play with a new idea and then they report back to the whole system so that we kind of, through experimentation, we move together um, as a whole. And openness and the sharing and the Creative Commons licensing of all of those outputs is just such a critical strategic component of that strategy. And what we found between these events and the pilot projects was that we were starting to, to build a, a very organic community of practice and have some really thoughtful discussion about what the opportunities and, and barriers could be to do successful work in this space. And this year, 2019-20, we started getting some very focused traction on this idea from our colleagues in government. So these things don't just kind of um, come out of the blue. Uh, it's usually because, you know, someone's been seeding the conversation and people understand what you're talking about and everything. So by the time we had kind of communicated this message to government, they had been developing their own strategy. Be, um, for for labor market um, and we're starting to connect that into higher ed and so there was a really natural convergence um, of the work that we had been doing in the development of community practice and some of the some of the big picture policy thinking that had been happening within the government um, and so they gave us these three tasks for um, this last fiscal year and that was to drive the creation and use of micro certification at Ontario colleges and universities to deploy a platform across the higher education sector and to host a micro certification forum. And so we started a little bit more intentionally talking to colleges and universities about this work. And we had to always frame it. We had to always answer this why now question because we had a bunch of institutions involved in the pilots and we were sharing our results and talking about it. But Every time you go into a room, and I go into a lot of these where you have uh, representatives from all uh, 21 or 24 colleges in the room, they're always wondering why now. And we would frame the question in, in these terms. The world of work is changing, dynamic, work opportunities are shorter, an individual may have five to 10 jobs in their first 10 years of work. And so what does that mean for our education system? How are we feeding into that? Or, um, or building our programming or making our dis curriculum decisions with that reality in mind. Um, employers are increasingly moving towards skill or competency-based approach. And in response, government and higher education institutions have all kind of asked the, the learning and recognition system to consider how it might become more nimble um, to allow for um, the appropriate recognition. So these are all themes. I'm sure, sure Serge, they're in your blog from, you know, you know, decades ago. They're all things we know and hear about, but, um, but they, they, they deserve to be repeated because, um, because this question crops up all the time. The second one that I always get is, you know, why should we work together with you on this? Okay, we get, we get the fact that this is important. We want to do it, but we to go off uh, in our own direction. So what are the advantages to tackling these challenges as a collective? And our answer to them was always that success in this space requires openness and cohesion. And if we don't take the opportunity to build it and shape it, what we will end up with is a patchwork, uh, which will be increasingly confusing to employers. And we heard this theme coming up at our microcertification forum on Friday. Um, common currency, or at least, you know, the connection of, of, um, of, of recognition across multiple different platforms is really important. So we, the first thing we would say to our institutions is please don't be an island in this. 
please think of yourselves as connected to a larger system and a larger economy and a, and a, and a kind of a larger ecosystem that you can tap into and contribute to, to for your own strategic advantage. And this is exactly the reason why uh, we think it's important that an organization like ours be involved. Our work in this space has always been focused on open system level thinking. Um, and so people always ask us, well, who's in and who's out? No one um, at this stage, especially. So we talk about universities and colleges and the workforce all being connected. We talk about a range of delivery mechanisms and learning modalities being part of the conversation about it being something we need to consider in both continuing ed education and for credit and of course as a bilingual province and a bilingual agency that it be that there be opportunities available in both French and English as we move forward. And so as a central agency Campus Ontario is really well positioned to help and at the end of the last forum we posted an open invitation for individuals to join uh, a very informal working group. And the main task of this working group was to develop a common set of principles and a framework to guide the activity going forward that we knew was coming because of the interest from government. And we were so fortunate to have a number of different thinkers at the table. And again, it's another great example of where diversity um, and divergent thinking really leads to a better product. Uh, so we had nine universities, 12 colleges, 10 employers, and five public sector organizations participate. And in the early work of this community, we, we never made the exploration in the space by our institutions to be contingent on adhering to a particular definition because we, we never wanted to be too prescriptive out of the gate. But we had reached a point with government interest where we needed to start to frame our work uh, within a working definition. And so this is the one from RMIT um, that resonated the most with the micro certification working group and which we based some of our work on. I'm sure you're all familiar with this one. And it's this desire for definition that's also connected back to the same question that we that we get pushed back in the other direction. Why do we need open and shared principles? There's sometimes a level of comfort and desire for a definition, but some hesitancy about um, about sharing uh, what those what those open principles might be going forward. And I think that this is so critical in this conversation, open and shared principles, because as soon as you start talking about micro certification, you start talking about values. What is the academic mission of an institution? What is the economic mission of an institution? Who decides what skills and competencies are valuable? Who decides what's valuable is you know, probably the, the most kind of complicated nugget um, that we're starting to see kind of um, that is emerging in our work in this space. And these value-laden challenges can really trip us up because when deeply held beliefs about how the world should work are challenged, it can be very uncomfortable. Um, but we think that that discomfort is actually a critical marker um, to moving forward. And, and, and that as a system, the only way that we can kind of start to explore in this space is by engaging with those uncomfortable conversations and then sharing back what we've learned. And so we did that through this working group. We used Google Docs um, to generate ideas. People upvoted um, what they wanted um, to see more of. Uh, we combined principles. Um, and really what our institutions wanted and what the employers wanted is something with really clear inclusive language that had a clear purpose and that was aspirational, but that didn't have any unnecessary roadblocks to new ways of thinking about this work. And so we put it all together onto one page, and this is our, this is our one page principles and framework. It's published on our website. We've created an adoption form to kind of try and get some sense of who might be using it. Um, those, they're the institution logos that are using it. And we, we decided to put that theory into practice by funding 14 institutions to engage in pilot work around these principles. And so we had six colleges and eight universities working in this space over the last three months. And, and some of them said, you know, we, we are, we're hitting all these principles, but we need to include a little bit more effort on this space. And these are the gaps that we see. So they are all using these 
elements to guide their work and the conversations they're having internally at their institutions. I'll also note that we had 36 submissions from 28 institutions for these pilot projects, way more demand um, than, than supply of opportunity, um, and which is why we're, we're, um, we're making the uh, pitch to government that we go forward with more support in this area. And these pilot projects then, again, in the spirit of openness and inclusion, shared back their work at a forum, big forum event that we had last week. All of the pilot projects, if anyone is curious, are listed on our website, um, along with their industry partner and what kind of skill or competency they're interested in, in um, targeting. And the employer industry connection was really um, something that the working group emphasized as being critical going forward, um, something that is captured in the framework and principles. And what we're seeing as part of the development of these pilot projects are institutions really um, being intentional about how to best cultivate these relationships. Some of them are meeting weekly uh, with their employer partners. Some are just meeting uh, monthly. Some of them have structured their relationship, clearly articulating roles and responsibilities in the form of an MOU. Um, and all of the kind of all of the results of this learning, um, we hope to. Um, to use and as the underpinning of our next phase of pilot projects going forward if that is approved. So we pulled it all together last week, Don said, at a, at a very large event, um, which was our biggest community event around this, era, um, this topic uh, since we went from 88 to 100 uh, to uh, 250 people attending and 175 on the live stream. And again, um, learning what we did from Dawn and the open badging um, forums that, that we held those two years in a row, um, that the diversity of perspectives is so critical at these events, um, and that divergent voices are welcome, um, encouraged, and that um, the more we see them come forward, uh, the better uh, we think we'll end up. So I just wanna end um, on this note that, um, I was talking to a woman uh, a couple weeks ago who was working on developing open competency frameworks with employers and kind of trying to help them. Because uh, I asked her, "How do you how do you engage those employers and and don't they see the the, the competencies that they develop in their industry as being proprietary uh, benefit to them that they would not want to make open?" And she said, "It's actually they're starting to think the opposite. The saying used to be, you know, if you want to go." Uh, fast, go alone, and if you want to go far, go together. She was like, what I'm starting to see is that people are understanding that, that the, the world is, and the factors are changing so quickly that if you want to go fast, you actually have to go together because that's the only way that you can, that you can marshal the resources um, and the talent to be able to tackle some of these challenges. And what, what she's seeing is that, that people are starting to work together in a systemic way and then creating unique competitive advantages for themselves out of that kind of collective agreement on, um, on what it is that we're talking about. So, so that was reassuring to me um, because I, I do really think that openness uh, and, and having that principle of sharing back is gonna be the only way um, that as a system, as an agency, as a province, as a country, um, as an internationally, that we are going to um, even begin to start to solve some of these problems. So what's next for us? Um, we've got a special edition of a micro certification newsletter going out um, midweek, which will include um, Don's reflection on his business models report uh, to be followed up by a webinar at the end of March. So don't miss that one. Uh, it's really interesting um, look internationally at all of the different business models that are currently active in higher education um, and in other industries in this space. Um, we are continuing to support our institutions to take an open approach to their work um, and we are looking forward um, to getting uh, government approval to continue to support our institutions in um, exploration of this space. So that is the end of my piece. 
Um, I'd love to talk more um, and to see what you're thinking and kind of what jumped out at you and challenged me on things. Um, it's all it's all part of it. And I also have just a page at the end of my presentation slides, which I will share um, into the community that have all of the uh, links to all of the things that I referenced. Thanks, Don. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lena, for doing that. That's uh, it's a really uh, excellent overview. I, I learned a ton myself. Just oh, good. <laughs> all great. So, and you're an expert. <laughs> well, it's 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 also partly the the approach that you've taken, which I, which I think is great. It's very open. It's very cross sectoral. I think it was brilliant to. Um, make it a, 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 a requirement of the pilot that they, they must engage out, outside of the higher education yeah. sector. I think that was uh, really crucial. We got a lot of pushback on that. <laughs> I bet you did. We did, yeah. yeah. Um, so what, I, I, I'll, I'll just kick off the questions. I noticed uh, Justin's uh, joined us. Justin, uh, um, uh, there, the slides will be put up for this after, but you've been part of the group and, and uh, I think you've heard a, a little bit about what eCampus Ontario has done. Um, Lima, I, I just want to ask you a couple of questions, I guess. What other elements might make this scale up better in Ontario? Uh, and I'm wondering whether you might talk about common frameworks, common, common skills, uh, you know, somehow getting on the right page. And you were talking about values and, and whether values might be a springboard for that kind of thing. Can you just sort of comment on that and where you, where you hope things might lead? From a higher ed perspective? From a system, ecosystem perspective. Yeah. Um, so I think that, um, that more, convert, more dialogue um, and sooner is better. Um, and so what I'm trying to do is kind of encourage all of the other system agencies that are working in this space, because there are many in Ontario. Um, you know, it's a huge province and, uh, and there are a lot of different people with interest in this area. And so one of my kind of personal goals is to encourage those system agencies to also be sharing back what they're doing. Um, because what can happen is quite easily um, that uh, that it that when there is um, when there is kind of an attempt to control the message um, from whichever group and, and to you know I'm not I'm not sure um, what the strategy is there but but it it does happen that um, that you know a uh, an opportunity, a call for proposals, for example, can come out, um, which has, which takes a very different track um, and, and isn't kind of part of that collective dialogue. Um, I hate to see that happen because I, I just really want all of the resources that we have to go, to go forward together. I'm seeing great um, strides in that space um, led by the government of Ontario right now. They have, they have released three calls for proposals in the last, in this space, the Ministry of Labour has, in the last um, three or four months, and all of them require that the outputs carry an open license. So that in and of itself is just so fantastic. We were, you know, cheering um, internally here. I'm so happy to see that. And I really think that um, that any public money uh, needs to be needs to be carrying that requirement. Um, if it doesn't, then then that is definitely a conversation I want to have. So I think I think that's a risk. I mean, the other the other um, and and an opportunity. The other element that I think might help us scale is uh, using those principles of openness and kind of collectivity to guide us um, is some sort of um, direction from, uh, from you know, the, some higher body like the government of Ontario um, to say, this is a key part of the labor market. 
it's, it's, a, it's an area that we want to prototype in and understand better. And we want collectives of employers to gather around that piece of the market and start to articulate what is needed in a way that is open and shared and collective and all those sorts of things. Um, and so I'd love to see them, um, I'd love to see them start to, to push in that direction. Um, and, and we have put ourselves forward as partners in that pursuit um, because it, it, it's the way to move forward at scale um, and, and you need to start with just one area of focus and allow others to follow your lead. Um, and that is how you would get to, to a scalable solution. And that is happening all over the place in the US. It doesn't seem to be happening here in Canada. Great, excellent answer, thank you. Um, and that's actually a fairly good segue, but Serge, maybe I'll, um, I think you were the one who typed in that thing about the territorial dimension. Perhaps you want to ask that verbally? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, you know, so Sorry, there is a project. Do you mind stop, stopping yep. the share and so we can see each other? Yes. yes. So how, how important is uh, territorial dimension, the fact that there is a project at the Ontario level and not just at the institution, institutional level? Oh, I think it's critical. And I mean, the, the, when you're working in a system perspective, you always want, you know, borders tend, start to dissolve, right? And especially when we're talking about the movement of talent. Um, you know, the qu questions that I would get from people are like, well, why aren't you doing this internationally? And why aren't you, you know, <laughs> which is a great point. And, and there are many organizations that are dedicated to taking an international view of this issue. But I also think, you know, we here at Camps Ontario, we take a, we take an iterative prototyping approach. And so we're lucky enough that we, that we represent a whole system. But at this stage in the process, I also, I, I can't quite imagine the reality of kind of trying to execute pilot projects that are that are cross provincial or something like that, just because I don't think that we're mature enough in our in our thinking and our institutions haven't kind of quite figured out what this means to them and their business models yet in order to enable that kind of focus. And so my answer to that question, I'm always glad that we're operating at Ontario. I would love to see more broadly. I'd love we were we were so pleased to see other provinces at our event. We had Saskatchewan there. We had people from Manitoba there. I know we had people from BC on the live stream. Um, that is all for the better. Um, but at, at this point, you know, from a practical perspective, you have to start somewhere. And so the, the provincial level for me is kind of probably the space where you can still make, an, make a difference, but it's manageable enough that you're that you're because that you're not kind of you know having to get so many different people from so many different regions to agree on what it is that you're doing there's a fine line between you know getting it done and um and recognizing that this issue is is not one that actually has borders um so i don't know if that answered your question serge but i'm uh, I mean, everything I do, I think about it at a, at a systemic perspective for the province of Ontario. And so it just comes naturally to us here. Um, I wouldn't have wanted it to be any narrower. And I would mm -hmm. hope, I would hope someday it could become bigger. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know if you, if you have to hope or, or fear that it would become bigger. Uh, I think what is very interesting uh, to, to see what you, you are doing and others are doing uh, with Don, we wrote an e-portfolio and we have this, uh, this vision that a good approach to e-portfolio should be a regional approach, a territorial approach, yeah. a provincial approach, that you don't do a portfolio just in one university or in one school, it doesn't make any sense, or, it, or the sense is very, very limited. And if you want to really to have an impact and a transformative impact, then you need to, to, to work cross sector and the, and the unit can be the city, it can yeah. be the, the region, the, the province, or even the nation, but you, you need to, to anchor in, into some, some reality and to bring people from different uh, 
uh, organizations and perspective to, together. Yeah. And suddenly, what, what, what is beautiful with badgers, you are doing it and we don't have to convince you that it has to be the Ontario level. Uh, well, with the ePortfolio, it would have taken years and would have been totally unsuccessful in uh, making people understand that it was the right approach to have a territorial approach. So I think this is a mm -hmm. beauty I can, I can witness with, with, with badges is that uh, the uh, territorial approach is a kind of uh, obvious. We have to start at this level. Yeah. Uh, and, and we can. And, and we can because badges are so, uh, such a simple technology to, to, to use, a picture with metadata. We can do uh, wonders with it. Mm -hmm. And in Canada, it's just the natural, you know, we're a federation of provinces. And so, um, and jurisdiction for, for higher education falls at the provincial level. And so it's a very natural, mm. you know, realm in which to, to tackle the issues. And, um, and, and as long as, you know, I, and I would say this to all my provincial friends as well and, and in other provinces, share, share back what it is that you're doing. Um, and, and I think that's, I think that, you know, kind of coming at this from the open education community, um, you know, they understand that adopt, adapt, share back um, concept. And, I, and I, I'd love to see that, kind of what I'm hoping is that I can see that philosophy applied to our principles and framework that we've developed would love to see Saskatchewan take it make it make sense for them um, and then share that what their changes are back um, with with the larger community so so yes I agree that it's that it's a reasonable place to start it's a rational place to start at the territorial or regional or provincial level um, and but that it it it's very important that it be um, that that it be shared uh, back those those uh, developments with a larger community. I, I'm just wondering if I can push that a bit. Um, uh, you you were talking about not wanting to make it smaller. Um, yeah, we're actually pursuing a sort of a greater municipal event in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if. Uh, sort of an ecosystem of ecosystems approach without yeah. complicating things too much could could provide some sort of overlapping synergies. Uh, I think it could. I think it could. And I think it's just about the level of logic that you're working at, right? That's why we, that's why our framework and principles is extremely general. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's supposed to be that level. And, and what I always say when I'm talking at colleges and universities about this, because sometimes they're, they're, they're quite nervous about um, about engaging in this work um, with this with this kind of collaborative approach um, because they see it as a competitive advantage for them. They see they see adding this piece of their of the of the value proposition to their degrees and diplomas is like something that they need to kind of hold on to really tight. Um, and it's neither it's 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 always this it's not an either or proposition, it's both. You can be part of a larger kind of ecosystem and have your competitive advantage clearly defined within that. And we saw that in our pilot projects. Every single one of them was engaging with a partner that made sense for their region. And we had multiple municipalities involved. Um, well, not just, there's the city of Kingston that's working with two different institutions, but I also know of another project that's starting to evolve in the north with um, the city of Timmins, the city of Sault Ste. Marie, and the city of Sudbury. The municipal level makes a ton of sense for these things because often they have challenges with their talent systems that are very specific to them. We had, um, you know, OCAD University, heart of downtown Toronto, like tech and design thinking center, partnering with uh, you know, a, a wearable tech company. And we had Sioux College, small local college in the north of Ontario, partnering with um, a forestry uh, company to enable um, employees to gain better knowledge of indigenous land claims. Like those are two examples of where they took the concept and, and made it, a, met a regional need um, 
And so I really see that balance emerging and I can see our institutions start to figure that out. There is space for me to both participate at a systemic level, contribute, and still carve out a niche that makes so much sense to my community, my, my regional economy. Um, so I love that idea and I, and I hope that more people start to see it that way. I'm, I, I think what I'm hearing in that too is, is there's also a, a way of focusing on a, on a particular sector in a way that can be transferred to other sectors later, but without going yeah. too wide at the beginning. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we, 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 I mean, we only, we have set very tight parameters on our pilot projects because they only had four months to do it. Um, and so there was one skill or competency that they were targeting. Right. Um, and that's the place to start, we think. Okay. Yeah. There was another question, Don. Oh, I didn't see it. Um, and 100. Uh, 100. Yes. Uh, who is the issuer of the micro credentials? What is the role of employers in the recognition process? Do you mm. recognize badges issued by employers or other external organizations? Great question. Uh, lots of questions in there. <laughs> Sorry, it's a compound question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, who is the issuer of the micro credentials? So we are, so we have been, our approach has been community first, tech second um, in all of this. So because we, we find that, you know, what the platform is and blah, 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 can really distract our institutions from um, doing the hard work, which is, you know, how are you doing your assessment? How are you engaging with employers? What, you know, what's your, what's your kind of curriculum review cycle and how might something like this fit? Um, and so, the issuing platform came second um, for us. Um, and what we did is we gathered all of our pilot projects together to kind of come up with a set of requirements um, that they wanted to see for um, the platform that they were going to be engaging in for just for the purposes of the pilot. And then we released a request for quotes onto the, into the world um, to have vendors come forward to um, to propose solutions to provide a platform. We ended up um, with a VC diploma, uh, the, the platform out of France, um, which uses, which issues on the blockchain. Our institutions were very curious about the blockchain um, and how they might kind of uh, integrate with the platform like that. And so this was an opportunity for them to play um, with a platform like that. So that's the one that we're using right now. Um, the issuer in terms of who's actually issuing is the institution. Um, because I mean, we're a higher ed organization. And so um, we're trying to create opportunities for our institutions to engage in this. So, so we, we made them the issuer, um, but uh, they needed to have partner endorsement from an employer. And there are varying levels of what that endorsement looked like in the pilot projects. It ranges from everything from, you know, being sitting on the committee that's making the decisions about the curriculum to actively assessing um, the evidence provided by the students. So, so we will come out of these pilot projects with a sense of what the range of that relationship looks like and share that back with the community. Um, so institutions are issuing, they, but they must have um, partner endorsement from the from the employer um, and do you recognize badges issued by employers or external organizations um, so we don't we don't engage in in any work like that as eCamps Ontario we're 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 a, we're a body that facilitates those opportunities I, I imagine that our institutions might find themselves in a situation where they would like to recognize badges issued by employers or other external organizations. That is a use case that makes a ton of sense. Um, did I answer all those questions? Are there more? I think so. I think so. Um, so the, the employers were um, involved in various ways at the risk of getting overly technological. Uh, if indoors were employers were endorsing the result yeah. that was an informal endorsement it wasn't baked into the badge according to oh no it's baked in it is baked in yeah yeah, yeah right. um it had to be it was a requirement of our principles and framework okay yeah okay. uh requirement yeah um and uh their logo as well the employer's logo 
and evidence um, and summon of, uh, a full detail of the summon of assessment. So for example, um, George Brown is working um, on deaf blind intervener um, credential. So, you know, making sure that people who are working in social services or health services have the ability to communicate well um, and effectively with people who are deaf blind. And so they're working with a couple of organizations um, like the Helen Keller Society and, and the Deaf Blind Association of Ontario, um, and they are co assessing. Uh, so the employer, so those associations are assessing a video that those students will um, will record of themselves um, signing and interacting um, with someone who is deaf blind and showing their intervener skills, um, and that, I, as I understand it, in the pilot project, that video will be assessed by both George Brown um, and those societies. So I love that example because I think it shows a really wonderful and deep connection between higher ed and, and industry um, that makes the that endorsement bulletproof um, and and make sure that that the reliability of that in, of that endorsement and the recognition of that skill is very strong right great so uh, Justin I see you've um, um, revealed yourself. Uh, do you have any questions? There he is. <laughs> yeah, I do have a question. And I, I apologize if you already covered it. This is a fascinating mm, topic. Um, so thank you. And I'm sorry to tune in late. But um, mm. so as I've understood it so far, these are credentials that are in some sense co-authored or co-designed by, mm. by higher ed and by partners. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, so the... Um, just out of curiosity, I've also gathered that the credentials are issued at successful completion of, you know, some curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, is there a lot of, is there also recognition of uh, learning or accomplishments that say happening in the, in the workplace for employers of, or excuse me, like employees uh, of like the, the partner organizations? Mm -hmm. Uh, oh. In any of these pilot projects, yeah, yeah. I see and if you, you sorry if you already covered this and I missed it. No, I didn't. I didn't. No, it's a good question. Um, I believe so. So the one example I'm thinking of um, is uh, is one through Western Continuing Education. So Western University here in Ontario, um, Continuing Ed School of Continuing Education, developed a change management program uh, or a change management, you know, competency piece of curriculum for people in the specifically in the nonprofit sector and they were working with a couple of um, you know agencies nonprofit agencies in their region and they were sending their employees to go and um, receive this um, credential and I and I I wonder I wonder whether they have gotten to the point where where they as the nonprofit that sent their employees are willing to say, um, this means something in our workplace. Is that what you're asking? Like this, mean, you know, you can get a promotion or you can, you know, whatever with this. Is that what you're getting at? Um, yeah. So that'd be part of it. Now, the idea of, of not only co-authoring, co but in co-authoring, you're also, I think, co-valuing yeah. the, the learning. Um, my question was about, you know, uh, uh, learning that, learning and skills that are demonstrated say in the workplace you know um, whether that uh, whether there are any pilots that are making real use of, of kind of documenting evidence of, of that learning in the workplace oh, and, and yeah. kind of and, and baking it into the credentials yeah so I mean there's yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard of IBM's um, internal approach so something like that Right. Something. Are like you that. talking? Are you still talking about like an integration with higher ed, or or once since once people are already in the workforce, that it just being that it's contained once they're already in the workforce? Um, are are most of the recipients of these credentials uh, currently students? Right. Yes. Of, okay. Okay. Yeah, and are, so I think you're thinking, you know, four or five steps downstream. Um, from where these pilots are at, and I and I love that, um, but they're just they're not done yet. They haven't even issued um, the credentials. 
But it's interesting, Justin, uh, there's a half step in that direction. One of the things they programmed for this event that took place last week was uh, looking forward to badges for work integrated learning. So we had somebody from the mm -hmm. University of Waterloo, who's a big um, a global leader in, uh, in uh, co-ops and uh, uh, work, work integrated learning, just basically yeah. mapping, I guess, possible routes to that. Uh, maybe, Lena, you could just speak to that better than I. Well, I mean, I think the best thing to do is just send Justin the, the link to Anne Marie's, um, the live stream recording of Anne Marie's presentation once it's ready. Yeah. Okay. Because, um, yes, I think it is happening, but I think we're, I think we're probably, I think we're still a little, a little ways. People are still imagining that future right now. I don't, I don't know of anyone that's actively doing it, has gotten it together. I think Waterloo might be the closest. Well, thank you. I, I, I look forward to that. And I've, yeah. again, I'm sorry I missed. I'll look forward to the recording of, of this presentation, your presentation today, too, because sure. I want to rewatch that. Great. Thanks. Where do you, where do you work, Justin? Do you... I'm in Montana, the University of Montana. Okay, Western. great. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you have a system agency in Montana? Or are you, like, is there anyone that's kind of working on a half of, this, of the whole state? Not on behalf of the whole state. We are working. Um, yeah, I'm very interested in this topic because we are working. We do have a, a NSF project that we're working on right now, trying to do, I think, something very similar of okay. of addressing addressing the the value proposition up front and, and saying, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, let's find people who are willing to co-author and co-value micro credentials instead of building systems that are completely in-house closed ecosystems and yeah. then hoping that others recognize value in that after it's developed. Yeah, it's a non-starter. It's never going to work. If yeah. you take that, if you take that, that approach and that's, that's what we, t that's what we've been telling all of our institutions. Like you can do that, but it's going to be a waste of your time. Because this is about currency, right? It's about, and currency needs to be recognized as having value beyond itself um, and beyond any kind of one instance of it. And so, yeah. John's report might be really helpful for you in that. So he's, um, co he's, he's authoring a report for us right now on all of the different business models that are out there internationally um, for how higher ed is engaging in these kinds of conversations around micro certification and all the different kind of versions of that model that are available. And so that might be really helpful for you as well. Justin's name is actually in the current version of that. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would communicate with Justin because actually it's, it's this, this lesson learned. Don't preload too much. Uh, you need to be driven by, by demand yeah. and authentic uh, and Nice, nice tight feedback loops so and yet people want they still they're still going to want something right mm -hmm. some sort of structure so it's finding that space it's like it's not fully structured and all prescriptive but it's not nothing right. so how do you kind of how do you give some people a place to start with it's like the difference between you know, putting a Google Doc out there for collaboration that has nothing on it and has some, or that something that has something already written, you know, like those, the, it's easier to react to something that's already there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I see that we're over the hour. This has been a great discussion following on from a really, really good uh, presentation, uh, inspiring, I would say. So thank you very much, Lena. Um, and um, we look forward to seeing uh, the community come together, um, encourage folks to uh, look in more detail at uh, the recording and uh, check out uh, eCampus Ontario in the future for future events and, and mm -hmm. ideas to build this uh, recognition ecosystem. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. So Thank long. You. Bye. It was nice to meet you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.